Reza Aslan was a Christian but converted back to the faith of his forefathers, it's Islam. He has now written a book about Jesus. The book has become controversial as it calls into question some of the core tenets of Christianity. Uh, the book is called Zealot, the Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth. And Reza joins me now from Los Angeles. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Well, this is an interesting book. Now, I want to clarify, you're a Muslim, so why did you write a book about the founder of Christianity? Well, to be clear, I am a scholar of religions with four degrees, including one in the New Testament and fluency in Biblical Greek, who has been studying the origins of Christianity for two decades, who also just happens to be a Muslim. So uh, it's not that I'm just some Muslim writing about Jesus. I am an expert with a PhD in the history of religions. Uh, but but, but I have been obsessed question, with Jesus. Though, it still begs the question, why would you be interested in the founder of Christianity? because it's my job as an academic. I am a professor of religion, including the New Testament. Uh, that's what I do for a living, actually. So, I mean, it, it would be like asking a Christian why they would write a book about, uh, you know, Islam. I, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure about that. But in, mm -hmm. in, honestly, I've been obsessed with Jesus for really 20 years. I've been studying uh, his life and his work and the origins of Christianity uh, both in an academic environment uh, and in a personal level for about two decades. And just to be clear, this is not some attack on Christianity. My mother is a Christian. My wife is a Christian. My brother-in-law is an evangelical pastor. Mm -hmm. uh, anyone who thinks that this book is an attack on Christianity has not read it yet. I want, but I want to read you some quotes from, from uh, some people who are criticizing you. One from John Dickerson who has written uh, uh, an op-ed piece on VoxNews.com and he says um, it's not a historian's report on Jesus is it an educated Muslim's opinion about Jesus he says its conclusions are long-held Islamic claims namely that Jesus was a zealous prophet uh, type who did, didn't claim to be God um, that well that's actually not what Islam claims about Jesus my, my uh, book about uh, Jesus overturns uh, pretty much everything that Islam also thinks about Jesus as well. And to be clear, I just want to emphasize this one more time, I am a historian. I am a PhD in the history of religions. Mm -hmm. This isn't a Muslim opinion. This is an academic work of history, not about the Christ or about Christianity for that matter. It's about a historical man who walked the earth 2,000 years ago in a land that the Romans called Palestine. How, how are your findings different from what Islam actually believes about Jesus? Well, Je Islam doesn't believe that Jesus was crucified, first of all. Islam mm -hmm. believes in the virgin birth. Uh, I mean, Jesus was most definitely crucified, and my book does question the historicity of the virgin birth. So again, I mean, I know that we've mentioned this three times now. Uh, I'm not sure what my faith happens to do with my 20 years of academic study of the New Testament. I'm just trying to bring out um, what some others are claiming at this point, and I want you to answer to those claims, which is... Well, it's pretty clear that there are those who actually do not like the book, who are, uh, you know, unhappy with its uh, general arguments. That's perfectly fine. I'm more than willing to talk about the arguments of the book itself, but I do think it's perhaps a little bit strange that rather than debating the arguments of the book, we are debating the right of the scholar to actually write it. Well, let me, let me, give, you some, uh, let me give you some other quotes from uh, Dr. William Lane Craig, um, who is a uh, Christian philosopher and theologian. He's written a lot of books um, and done a lot of debates about science and religion. Mm -hmm. um, he said, Reza Aslan uh, um, merely repeats bygone claims about the historical Jesus that have since been abandoned and refuted. What do you say to that? Well, I would disagree. I have 100 pages of, of notes and about a thousand books uh, that I use in my, in my discussions. And, of course, in any scholarly discussion of Jesus, as with any scholarly discussion of any ancient figure, there are going to be widespread differences. But my, th my hundred pages of endnotes cites every scholar who disagrees with me and every scholar who agrees with me. And I would suggest that anyone who wants to actually comment on the argument of the book read not just the book but the endnotes and f to figure out where my scholarly uh, uh, argument about Jesus comes from. 
What and I'm sure are you're you, going to find are, people are, who disagree with me. Right, exactly. What are your, um, we're not talking about just people who disagree with you. Scholars, many scholars disagree with you as well. Um, but I want to get to the heart of, I want to get to the heart of like, what do you, what are your conclusions about Jesus? Well, my conclusions about Jesus start by placing him in the world in which he lived. So I start with one fundamental truth that everyone agrees on with Jesus, and that was that he was crucified. You have to understand that crucifixion in first century Palestine was a punishment that Rome reserved exclusively for crimes against the state, like sedition or rebellion, uh, treason uh, or insurrection. The thieves who were crucified alongside Jesus were not thieves. The Greek word blestis means bandit. And bandit was the most common term in Jesus' time for an insurrectionist. Mm -hmm. What I say is that if you know nothing else about Jesus except that you were, he was crucified, you know enough to understand what a troublemaker this guy must have been. The movement that he started was such a threat to the political stability of the empire that they actually had him arrested, tortured, and killed for it. So I start with that fundamental fact, and then I take the claims of the Gospels, as every single biblical scholar for 200 years has done, and look at them in light of the history of this world that we know. And what's interesting about Jesus' world is that we know a lot about it, thanks to the Romans, who were very good at documentation. And the picture that arises from this is of a real political revolutionary who took on the religious and political powers of his time on behalf of the poor and the meek, the dispossessed, the mm -hmm. marginalized, who sacrificed himself in his cause for those who couldn't stand up for himself okay, but, but and my, whose my death question, ultimately launched the greatest religion in the world. Yeah, I, wanna, I want you to ask, uh, actually there's another uh, chat coming and I want to get this on before we, um, we end this interview. Uh, Taylor, uh, Taylor Kane um, just says, uh, so your book is written with clear bias and you're trying to say it's academic. That's like having a Democrat write a book about why Reagan wasn't a good Republican. Is It, it, it just doesn't work. Well, what do you say would, to that? It would be like... It would be like a Democrat with a Ph.D. in Reagan who has been studying his life in history for two decades writing a book about but Reagan. But then why would, Again, why would a Democrat want to promote democracy by writing about a Republican? I mean, I, mean, I, well, I see that the assuming, point is, is that... Ma'am, may, uh, may I just yeah, finish my sentence for a moment, please? I think that the fundamental problem here is that you're assuming that I have some sort of faith-based bias in this work that I write. I write about Judaism, I write about Hinduism, I write about Christianity, I write about Islam. My job as a scholar of religions with a PhD in the subject is to write about religions. And one of the religions that I have written about is the religion Reza, that was you're not just writing about Jesus. a religion from a point of view of an, uh, an, an observer. I mean, the thing about it is, is that you're, you you're, you're, that you're 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 putting yourself as a scholar, and I've interviewed scholars who have written books on the resurrection, on you know the real Jesus, and um, who are looking at the same information that you're saying to say that your information is somehow different from theirs, is really not being uh, no, honest I don't here. Think my Ma'am, my, my information is not different from theirs at all. I'm, I'm afraid that it sounds like you haven't actually read my book or seen what I've said about the resurrection or about Jesus or about his claims. I think you might be surprised in what I say. And there have been thousands of scholars who have written about this very same topic, many who disagree with me, many who agree with me. That's the thing about scholarship, is that it's a debate over ancient history, and I am one of those people making that debate. I think it's unfair to just simply assume, because of my particular faith background, that there is some agenda on this book. That would be like saying that a Christian who writes about Muhammad is by definition uh, you know, not able to do so because he has some no, he can do you know, so. bias against it. And he frankly, do, every, he can every do book so, that's, but almost I every book that's I believe that you've been on several by, programs have never disclosed that you were a Muslim, and I think that's an interesting full Ma disclosure. the second page of my book, the second page of my book says I'm a Muslim, Every single interview I have ever done on TV or on print says I'm a Muslim. You may not be familiar with me, but I'm actually quite a prominent Muslim thinker in the United States. I've written a number of books about Islam. It's just simply incorrect to say okay. that media isn't saying that I'm a Muslim. I would actually encourage you to actually try to find media that doesn't mention my biography, which, by the way, again, is on the second page of the book. All right, Reza, I want to thank you very much for coming on. The book is called Zealot, The Life and Times of Jesus of Nazareth. I want to thank you for coming on a, a Spirited Debate. Thank you. Thank you.